Yeah. You take away those distractors and give them something that they can set their mind to and, you know, learn like a trade or a skill set that uh, they can use later on in life, I think that would help more than anything. Yeah. I agree. I think uh, with technology comes a lot of wasted time in our lives. Though we use technology to try to get things done in a hurry, I think it ends up becoming a, a big time waster in our lives. Yeah, technology yeah. does. I mean, Facebook. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. How many hours do kids spend on Facebook? Well, I've been stoned it myself for sitting here in front of the Internet for hours and hours, you know, every yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Debbie's on my case, man. <laughs> But see, I mean, well, that, this is the it's only thing so I want. Much time wasted. That's why a lot of people think it. Look, look at the average kid. The average kid used to weigh when they were like ten to eleven years old. They used to weigh like thirty to sixty pounds. Now the average kid that's about that age weighs approximately eighty pounds. Why? Because they're stuffing their mouth with junk food. They got this headset on. They're talking to their friends on the internet. Plus, they're playing this Xbox. All of it, which is linked up to a TV. So oh, they have no excitement. If you go outside now, you know there are very few p- kids running up and up and down the streets. Kids don't even ask for bikes anymore. They don't even want to ride. They don't want the scooters. Xbox. They don't want hula hoops. They don't want to go outside and play basketball. But ever so often, they want to sit in the house and enjoy all this electronic stuff. But when the electronic stuff stops, they have nothing that they can actually do because they've been trained to do nothing else. And you know, if you think about something, if you know, long stretch, if something does happen and the Earth, you know, experiences a uh, uh, chromal mass ejection that destroys the communications grid for years and what have you, think of the retraining the populace will have to do because yeah. they're so involved in technology. Right. Right. Yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, it's like you, you work a job, and let's say this, all these jobs have moved everything to computer. So when that system goes down, and if it goes down for a day, you've completely lost a whole day of business. So oh, you've no. lost, like, Best Buy, like you've lost mega millions because you're dependent upon the system. The system has failed, so nobody can actually do anything. So how much money did you lose based on this day? Exactly. And, you know, back in the old days, I remember before we, we were real heavy into computers, we were all paper. Paper this, paper that, you know. You fill the form out, you do this, you cross your I's, you dot, you, you dot your I's, you cross your T's, and, and, and you, you go on and you have your business. But the thing is, is nowadays, everybody's reliant on that box. And, right. and not only reliant on it, but they, they say that, you know, Hey, this is technology. It'll it'll increase productivity. But you know what? I have not seen that. Yeah. Right, right. It's we got a, like, we got another you know, caller here. Uh, uh, Debbie, go ahead. It's like an electronic freeway. You don't understand what I'm saying? Whereas people are just, you know, I was asking somebody at the DMV. I said, if your computer system actually crashed and you were never to get it up. How would you track the information on me as far as my driver's license, my information? You know, how would you know anything about me? Because y'all don't you no longer have paper records. Uh, it's the same right. thing with the Social exactly. Security Administration. That's my biggest yeah. fear. Right now, if I get to the age to collect Social Security, but if it crashes before then, how do you track me? Because you've done away with everything. And I know that you say that you have it backed up on Microfish, but I really truly don't believe that, okay? Because we're in, a, in the age of automation. So yep. how would yep. you actually tell me what I actually have coming for all these years? Okay, we got another caller. The systems go up. Uh, caller 209. Yeah. Caller 209. Uh, I think it's been, um, it's been benefits and downfalls of technology, period. So, like, for instance, the gun. There's been a lot of benefits to the gun, and, and a lot of accomplishments came out of the invention of the gun, but as well, there's been a lot of downfalls, too, behind the gun. Same thing, and the same thing with, like, feedback when you speak about raising children and sex messages. Like uh, get in that get in that phone, uh, caller, uh, so we can hear you and speak up a little bit. Can you hear me now? There you go. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. 
and there's some good things to technology too, like with the with the with the phones and the text messaging. Oh yeah. Now you can contact with your children more frequent, more frequently. Before, you know, they go out to the movies and you you really don't know what's going on, where they're at, or or what they're doing until it's time for them to get picked up. At least yeah. now you can get a text message or, or something sent to the phone and try to keep keep an update on. Them. Put the GPS yeah. on them. Well, no, you could do a, also with, you know, go what he said, if you limited the amount of texting and uh, calls they could make on the phone, that would be one way of monitoring so they don't, you know, that way you're ensured they're not spending their day on their, their text. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Extra, right. Well, the main thing is to get them to well, get some exercise. You can also put a chip in them nowadays, too. Uh, we're not going there. <laughs> Yeah, like going six six six. <laughs> Be chipping you know? walk through a scanner every two doors. Yeah, they like call it uh, healthy Ray, raising uh, children. I think technology for for me has actually been a hindrance because uh, if your kids always text, where are they really learning from? They're learning from their friends instead of me being able to impart my wisdom to them. They're, they don't have time. They're always on Facebook or they're texting and things, and that's why we've had to limit those type things so that I can actually spend time with my children and impart the knowledge and wisdom that my parents imparted into me. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing too is I think, uh, way, you know, I think that the speed in which we get information today has been beneficial. There's been so many times where me and my girlfriend have been out or or somewhere and we and we argue about a particular issue and we Google it right there from the phone or, or just pull it up right there on the phone and see who's right. I yeah. think the information age and the speed of how we receive technology is beneficial in many ways. Yeah, there's some uh, advantages, and oh, there's yeah. some disadvantages. Some well, of the disadvantages is less exercise, and uh, people yep. getting of uh, obesity uh, is is a disadvantage to some of this stuff. You know, you, there's not enough movement around. You used to have to get up and drive to the library. Yeah, you know, and walk, <laughs> and walk a little bit. But now you can just hit the Internet, and you got the dictionary, you got the encyclopedias, you got everything, all the information you need right in front of you. You know why well, you I know even so that move from the library on the internet now. You can go in there and and, and search the library field and pull up every book and then you can just check them out and then all you have to do is step in and pick them up. So you don't even have to spend any time in the library anymore. Right. Yeah. Yep. yeah exactly. Another trend that I've been noticing too is a lot of these kids now they're they're not reading anymore. They're watching videos. Um, yeah. they, they go out and they see they go up on YouTube and they try to get their their information from YouTube. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sounds like Kevin yeah. Allen, the master of many things. I don't, I don't, but what you okay, talking I about, one eye? How, how you can watch the video? Hey, you talking about watching videos and not reading? Yeah, man, that's me all over. <laughs> yeah, you can get it from a video. I don't though. think it's any, it's any less valid than books. I mean, just before the internet and before the video, people embellish all the time in books, and that's you had to go on books. And then right. Yeah, but now you can read off, a book. Off the you can read a book while you're driving because it comes on cassette or DVD or CD, or you can get uh, what's the uh, the e-reader. I mean, people don't actually have to pick the book up or read it anymore because you got all these machines that will read it for you. Yeah. Right, so they're losing their skill. Right. That's one of the skill sets that they're losing. I mean, oh, yeah. some of your basic fundamental skills are being lost because of technology. People are relying too much on technology. I gave, I know somebody at work, and I says, well, you know, well, just divide it out, you know, do it longhand. It, you know, they didn't have a calculator. Yeah, they can't do it. Come on, man, you, you don't know how to do longhand division? Come on, man. Right. I had to show yeah, them how yeah. to do it. Yeah, I know people like that, engineers like that, that can't do it. You know, they're so dependent on the calculator uh, that they actually need that calculator, man, to fire up these equations and different things. They can't do them by hand. One thing I think technology actually has been a negative is we lose our imagination yeah. if we're visualizing things or if we're actually seeing things. Where if you're reading, you visualize the story in your head. Exactly. Your imagination is then heightened. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Versus, you get into a role play type deal. Yeah. 
Hey, uh, 1 a.m., I noticed uh, the time. We're about uh, 10 minutes till the hour. Uh, no. Oh, okay. It's time to switch over? Time to start wrapping it up. Yeah, normally the crow would uh, call in, and I have another announcement I need to make. So uh, if you could address any last questions and uh, do your thing. Okay, well, I'm just going to say as far as uh, gentrification goes, you know, it's got some positives, it's got some negatives. I'm all, I'm all for gentrification because if you don't get the gentrification, uh, the area is going to stay dilapidated and broke down and everything. So I'm all for it. You know, it's all about bringing in good people and everything with, and, and uh, finances, changing things around. I just wish they would think more of the people that are already there that have been suffering and bring in some low-income housing and some different things like that to help them out and make them be able to let them be able to stay. And we get a good mixture of poor and rich and affluent and stuff like that, you know. And uh, that would be better than just moving everybody out and trying to get every last dime you can, you know, out of the area. You know, and I'm, I'm not for buying white residents like like the mayor is doing. And uh, uh, police officers, you know, paying them two hundred thousand dollars to come and live here, you know, where you bust heads at. For, forget that, you know, spend the money here on people that live here. Give me two hundred thousand to fix up my home. Yeah, I, I just moved here too. I was I was uh, I was out of the city of Detroit for fourteen years, and I came back, and they didn't give me a dime. The only thing they gave me was a six thousand dollar tax bill. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> While I'm trying to fix up my dilapidated house. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, we we going to wrap it up. Cleek, do you want to say anything? No, hey, I just appreciate the, giving me a chance to come on here. And, Man, I uh, appreciate you. you coming on because I tried to reach some other neighbors and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I gave him, he said, yeah, you know, I'll do it, man. You know, I'll be glad to come on and talk about why I came back to Detroit. It's another white guy and everything. And, and then... Uh, you know, I gave him all the information and everything, and I came back the next day, you know, to make sure everything was okay. And he said, uh, my wife has some questions about that. Uh, I'll get back with you, man, on that, you know. You know, you know kind of like scared of the radio and everything. But uh, I certainly appreciate you coming down here, man, and uh, you filling up a show for me and everything on gentrification. And I'm glad to have you in the neighborhood, man. Thank I'm you. telling you, and uh, I'm not a racist. You're not a racist. But I do say white a lot, and I do say black a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's you know, two okay. basic colors, Next one. Time, maybe we'll get the guys off of Pingree Street. Now that should be very interesting because I had a very interesting conversation with yeah. them because that's not right where we live. It's uh, a little far from us, and uh, it's a little challenge. But they say they love it over there. Call a two eight one. Is there anything else you want to uh, leave us with? Call her eight one two eight one. You, you want to leave us with anything? Um, no, I, I was just enjoying like the conversation and everything. And um, one of the last things I guess I want to say is overall, I came in towards the end of the discussion. But um, as far as technology goes, um, and as, as far as just I guess everything goes with children and upbringing, I, I more so um, would like to say that. I put more so of it on the parents as opposed to technology itself. I think a lot of it comes just from upbringing. Um, I think, you know, no matter where a child grows up, if they're, if they're fostered and given the right tools early, then they at least have a chance to, you know, um, do things. I remember and be successful because I remember when I was growing up, um, like there would be a time in the car, we'd take long car rides and stuff, and, you know, part of the time I would spend, you know, on my Game Boy or whatever, but the other half, I would spend talking to my parents and they maybe put the Game Boy up for a little, for a little yeah. bit because they didn't want me to be well so much into the technology. And, yeah. you know, if we're all sitting around the table or if we're all sitting in the family room, if I have my iPod and they would be like, hey, take it out. You know, that's really, we're all here together within the time together, take your iPod out. So I, I think um, that's what's missing now. I think that's the now missing link. As not, not just that the technology is becoming more advanced. I think that we're now using it as a crutch and it's become a crux instead of um, actually the parent raising their kids. It's starting to become an alternative. Yeah, apparently. amen. I agree. Are you my daughter? <laughs> <laughs> no. <Yeah>. It depends. <laughs> okay, uh, Clyde, you want to say anything? 
No, I appreciate you guys having me on. Uh,